Okay, so in this video, I'm going to give you guys a, a brief introduction to um, CSS and, and how you include it in your code. Uh, and we'll start to try and style some things. I just created a new file off of uh, the, the file that I created for the table video. And so we'll modify some things to do with the table, some of the, the properties of uh, the table, the headers and, and whatnot. And, um, and I added a paragraph that you'll see as well. I'll show you that code. We'll jump to putty and get right to it. So here what we see is my, my main files. Again, it starts with HTML and then it has a header and then it has some stuff in the header that was not there before. And then there's the body, right? And there's stuff in the body that was not there before, just added something. And there's the end of the body and the end of the HTML. Okay, so what I added in the body was, as you can see, this paragraph starts right here. Under the table, I, I just made a paragraph by using the, the P element, paragraph element. Uh, and then I copied some Latin from the, that I grabbed from the internet somewhere. It's often done just to show the structure of the document. It doesn't really matter what the content of this of this is, um, just that it, it's a paragraph. There's text there, right? It's random. Um, in that text, that paragraph, I did include the uh, bold element as well, so I could show something to do with this bold element. All right, and if you remember, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, there's my table, right? It's the same table as before. So I just added this paragraph and as a child element of the paragraph, I added the bold element, right, which ends right here. And then that's it. The paragraph ends down here. Now, one thing I guess I'd like to note, uh, and there's my link back to the uh, Sys101 index uh, page. One thing I'd like to note here, when you look at the page, you're going to see that it doesn't, the browser doesn't really care about my white spacing, right? It's going to do what it wants to do. Um, and the fact that this space is in here and it's kind of malformatted, uh, that's not affecting the browser in any way. The browser doesn't care about any of the spacing that we have here. Like the fact that I have body indented there, the browser doesn't care. That's for humans. <laughs> for somebody who's reading the code, that's really nice to have. So I'm leaving this looking very messy. But it's just because that's random text, and if there was real text in there, I would try to format it a little more nicely underneath of, um, of the paragraph element so that you can see clearly that it's a, it is, now push it one little bit more over, it's the child. This is the content, actually, of the paragraph element. And one, it has one child, the, the old element that's in there. All right, so how do we get to the CSS? Well, remember up in the head of this HTML document, we're speaking to the browser. So as usual, I have a, a title there first, right? And then I have this new element here called the style element, All right? And inside of this style element, that's the open tag and there's the close tag. Inside of this element, the content is uh, a series of rules that I have uh, to attempt to style this document. So since I'm speaking with the browser here, I'm, I'm just telling the browser, this is what I want to do with different elements, All right? So one of the things I wanted to affect or have an impact on and change, well, let's see with nothing right now, hey, uh, commenting things out in CSS in order to use a comment, uh, you use a slash followed by a star and it's multi-line, so it goes on and on and on until it finds a star followed by a slash. So the opposite, right? And so what I effectively do with, with comments of any sort is I hide them. I, so this is all right now hidden from the browser. The browser does see that the open tag, the style open tag and the style close tag, but the browser will not see or read or care about, it will ignore the comment, right? That's just there for humans. Humans can see it, but the browser ignores it. 
So I did that in order to be able, so I could write a few of these rules up and then uncomment them little by little. And so you can see what the effects of each of these rules as I go down and as I explain kind of the format of these rules a little more. So let's look at it right now. It's effectively there are no styles in here, right? They're written, but they're all commented out. The browser's ignoring all of them. So let's just look at the file. Um, just gonna make sure I, I wrote it out. Let's look at the file in its format, its unformatted format. And I, I'll, you know, I forgot is to show you the browser. There we go. So we will refresh that just to make sure everything's up to par. Google sees that there's Latin there and it's trying to translate it for me. Um, so there it is, very simple. It's really about the structure, right? The HTML is about the structure. All I'm trying to say is I want a table up here and these are the headers of the table. Follow, and these are the, the, this is the data, the internal data of the, of the table. And then I would like to have a paragraph and then I would like to have an, uh, a link. So I think of these elements in a very generic kind of way. Could be paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. Um, I, this, this has to do with the structure of the document. Now we're gonna wanna do something to this. We're gonna wanna paint the walls and whatnot. That's what we're gonna use CSS for. So we'll come on back here and I'll tell you a little bit about how this strange looking code works. All right, so what I have here, table headers by default, if we look back at this, table headers, remember I said that all the elements have a default style, right? And so by default, the table headers are centered on the table and the table size is as small as it can be. So this all looks messy, right? We're gonna to have to do some formatting here. By default, table headers are also, as you can see here, um, bold, right? All of this can be changed though. And, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do so. All right, so let's get back to Putty. So the first thing I'm doing in Putty is in this file, where the table lives, um, I want to first, here's the general format of these. Right, let's look at the table one first, even though there's one up, up here higher. We'll start with table and you can see the general format. So I use the element name, but not surrounded in angle brackets. So instead of being angle bracket table, open angle, table, close angle, uh, we just use the word table. Right, and we'll see this in a couple of way table header right there. Right, so it doesn't have the angle brackets around it. Paragraph doesn't have the angle brackets around it. Okay, so I just use the name of the element. This is one way to, to style things. It's the simplest way. There are three in all. This is the first of them and the, and the simplest. And it's called tag level. So I'm using the name of the tag. This is the table tag. So this is gonna target all instances of table elements in my document. So all at once, everything's gonna be, this is whatever I say inside of here is going to happen to all tables in my document, right? That's attached to it. Then the very next thing that you do, you put the, so you put the name of the element, you follow it by a curly bracket, an open curly bracket, and then typically I'll just close the curly bracket and then move it on down, out of the way, right? So that a very nice format looks like you can see that the closed curly bracket is in line with the first letter of the name of the rule. So this is one rule that I have here, right? One rule, it takes that format. Here's one rule right here. And so on, so on. Now it is possible in these, you, you, again, the browser doesn't care about white space, right? This is white, the reason I'm white spacing this the way I am is because it's nice for a human to read, but the browser doesn't care about it. So you'll see what I have up here is a similar format. Here, let's move this down one. So we'll uncomment that first rule so we see what happens with it, right? Now the comment starts here. So everything from here to there 
is going to be ignored by the browser. This one will not. Okay, so this looks different than the one I just explained, this first rule here, but it actually isn't. Um, there's the name of the element, the th table header, followed by the open curly bracket, and then just right in line, rather than giving it an enter, adding white space to clear the substance, there's only one thing here, there's only one rule. Um, I, I put the rule right in line, and then there's the closed curly bracket. So it's the same format. Tag name, open curly bracket, close curly bracket at the end, right? So it's contained in curly brackets and labeled with the name of the element you're trying to affect. All right, and then inside we have our property value pairs. And they always take on this format. There's property first. There's lots and lots and lots and lots of these properties. So we're not going to try to cover all of them, but if you understand how to go about this and the format of them, you could you can look them up. So it's property, colon, value, semicolon. Right? So that if you have more than one property, like here in the paragraph, I have one property here. The property is called background-color. Now, I didn't make that up. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of these properties to, that allow you to do all kinds of things, right? So you just need to, these, this is something that you just get used to, kind of like when you're working with Word. You, you don't really know all the things that can be, that Word can do. Uh, all the formatting that it can do. It's just something that you learn over time when you're when you're using the format. So that's the value, background dash color, right? Colon, and then that's the property, sorry. Colon, and then the value that I want to set that property to. And in this case, I used gray. So I'm trying to change the background color of the paragraph, ele of all paragraph elements in my document. So if I have 15 paragraph elements, all of them are going to take this, this style. The background color of all of them will be gray. Color is a property that applies to fonts. So I'm making the font color. Interesting that they say background dash color and they don't say font dash color, but it is what it is. When they made this up, font color is just called color. Colon. So I'm making the font color white and the background color of the paragraph gray. Okay, that's for that rule. We're not going to see that one right off, but we will see it. I just want you to see the, the format of this. Here's a table header, background color. I want to set to yellow. So colon between property and value end the rule with a semicolon, right? The, the particular pair. Multiple pairs are fine. Width, 50. Border collapse, collapse. Each of them has a semicolon on the end. When I'm finished with everything that I want to do with the table element, then I close with a semicolon. So I can have as many rules as I want, each one of these being its own rule, right? All right, so let's just see what happened with um, this first rule, where I, I'm targeting the table header, so all the TH elements in my HTML for the table. Let's see, I'll run down there and show you. There's one right there, so name, age, year, table headers. I'm trying to affect those. I'm trying to have an impact on those, a style. I'm trying to style them. All right, and it's closed. So that's all I'm trying to do with that one. Let's write it out and switch you over to the browser and refresh. Okay, we saw a little difference there. I did see the year slide over a little bit. Um, it's because the table, by default, is is precisely the size that, it, as small as it possibly can be. 
So we can't see the, the lines of the table here right now because we don't have the borders turned on. But um, it, it must go just like this, right along the edge here. It comes over. <laughs> We're going to see it in a minute because I, I did set it so that we can see it. And so what happened was this this what year was centered. It, it's left justified now, so you see it's lined up here. So that's that's the left, the leftmost column, the center column. See how the five and the A are lined up, and the B and the N are lined up. So they're they're left justified now. By default, data elements, so the the inside of the of the uh, table um, are left justified. Table headers are centered by default. But we just changed it, right? That's what, that was the point that we can change all of these things. So let's go back to putty and change something else that might be a little more obvious when we do it. All right, I'm going to change. I'm going to make that table. I'm going to make that table a little bigger, so that it's not as tiny as or so small that you can't see anything changing in there. So I'm going to make it, so these are properties of the table that I can modify, right? So the width of the table, and I used a percentage here so the browser will understand and it will know to say that I want the table to be 50% of the visible browser, right? 50% of the screen. Uh, and border color, I'm going to, the, the next one, <laughs> the table here that I wrote, the one that the cursor's blinking on, puts the border in, right? It adds a border. Border collapse is something we want to do to make the borders of the, the cells, the headers, and the table itself all collapse into one border. And so for right now, we're just really going to see an effect from width. And when I open up the next one, we'll see more. All right, let's write it out. Control O. And go over to the browser and do a refresh, see what we got here. Okay, so now the table is 50% of my page. So now that it's spread out a little bit more, we can see that they are in fact left justified. And if I came back to putty, I don't think I need to prove that to you, so I won't do it. That if I took a, a line left off, if I got rid of that by commenting it, we would see that um, those table headers would, by default, become centered rather than left justified. Uh oh, I was saying all that, I'm not showing you. If I if I commented this one out, that's the rule where I say table headers. The text in a table header should be left justified, aligned left, right. If I remove that by putting a slash star in front of it and a star slash in the back, the browser will ignore it. And so therefore it will use the default style. And you would see those table headers are, are centered by default. So there's an example of me modifying the default, um, the, the default style of an element. Let's take the next one out so we can see the borders. I'm going to comment this out right here as we work our way down this list of rules that I added already to this. All right, swap over to the browser and refresh. There we go. All right, let's jump over and take the next one. We'll see as we go down how uh, each of these rules is having its own impact on the particular elements. All right. So here's another example where I I just did it in line. I only had one rule. I just did it in line. I did not do it in line here uh, simply because I wanted to show you that you don't. It doesn't matter if they're in line or not. If you have multiple rules, you should do them in this style. If there's only one rule that you're applying, 
Well, it's okay. Just do it like that, all in one line. Really, just keep in mind that it's, this is for a human to read, right? The browser, again, the browser does not care about white space. It doesn't matter that you have it indented. It's not, it can't see. It just reads the, 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 uh, the characters as they, as they come to it. All right, let's control O. Enter. And let's see what's happened here. And that's what I got out of it. And the rule that I cheat, I modified there was let's go back to putty. There we go. The rule I modified there was uh, th. I'm trying to affect the th, right? Table headers. I changed the background color. Is the property I want to change? Yellow is the value I want it to be. Well, there's a number of words that you can use there. Tomato, <laughs> red, black, green, blue, you know, all of the colors that you think of. But there are even more. I mean, there's a lot of colors you can change it to. And there are ways to look up the lists of those colors, which I'm going to show you when we make it through this. So now the paragraph. Let's do a little something to the paragraph. Uh, let's just go ahead the whole way. So I'm taking the comments off all together. So now nothing's commented out. So the, I'm going to set two properties on the paragraph. I'm going to make the background of the paragraph gray. So I set background color, colon, gray, semicolon. Font color, which is just color, right? Colon white. So I have white text and a black back, I have a gray black, a gray background. So they both have a colon after them. And then I closed my semicolon. I'm sorry, my curly bracket right here. So we don't want to, don't miss these curly brackets or the colons or the semicolons. It's all pretty straightforward, but if you miss one of these, you know how it goes now, by now. You've worked with Unix enough that you know that if we miss any one thing here, if you misspell any of these properties, and there are thousands of them, right? So you could misspell one. That'd be the first thing I would look for if something didn't work out the way I thought. The very first thing I would check is, are my curly brackets in place, colon and semicolon in place? And then I would say, okay, maybe I misspelled the property and I would look the property up again, All right? So control O, enter, and let's see what kind of an impact we have here. Back to the browser and refresh. Okay. There, as I mentioned, there are hundreds of, if not thousands, probably thousands of these properties that can be set. Um, and there, there's too many to even think about trying to uh, acclimate ourselves to ourselves. The, the best, I think that, the best thing is to just understand how to use the style sheets, the, the, the property value pairs with the colon between them and the semicolon on the end. Um, once you know that, then you can, I'm gonna show, give you a way to look some of these up. You can say, well, I wonder what all I could do to a, a, a paragraph, right? And, and so there's a way to look that up. Uh, there are other things you can do. You can change these link colors, right? So, uh, an, an unvisited link, here I was just doing something there. So this link, it's, it doesn't have to be the default color of the browser, right? It can take another color by default. And then once you click it, you know, they normally change to another color, right? So you can have that that other color, uh, a different color. So you can set everything. You can set every anything that you want on the, this document. You can set it. Okay, so let's take a little peek at um, a great site that I use all the time when I'm looking up these things. Because you know, I, I don't remember them either. You would have to be someone who really, really worked with with uh, CSS constantly. So this is w3schools.com. And I'm just looking at the CSS portion. Now you can look at the HTML stuff too. They have every possible HTML tag that you can think of. What I really like about this site, whether it's HTML or CSS, is that they always have these, they show you whatever example they're showing you. 
and then you can click that is this showing are you guys seeing this let's see yeah and you can modify the code and then run and, and look at what what has happened when you change the code so you can see it formatted here and they don't have it indented the way I like kind of like for it to be but again it doesn't really matter uh, it only does to a human it doesn't look so bad because it's small uh, the more the more HTML we have the more you would appreciate uh, the, the indenting that I'm doing so w3 schools an X on that CSS and we can see all kinds of martyr margins borders backgrounds colors colors I was telling you about there's some of them right there there's a lot more of these colors a lot more and you can use hex colors as well so you can use one of these color pickers right and it'll show you here CSS background colors some examples there text color so there's a, a plethora, I mean, really anything that you can think of. So kind of like you would do in Word when, you, when you're looking through the document and you're saying, well, you know, or you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, I really wish I could change that font color. Then you just start poking around and you say, all right, there is a way to change the, the, the font color. Right, so this works very much the same way. It really, the, the heart and soul of this at this moment is, is just to understand those val uh, property value pairs. And this first method of, um, of targeting a particular tag, and this is called tag level, um, where we use the name of the, the, the individual elements, like we could use an H1 or we could use a B or table or paragraph as I did. Oh, the one thing I wanted to, to mention to you with that bold text that I had, um, let me jump back to the browser. Notice how should be. that bold text. I did not have to have a special rule for for the B element, right? Let's look at that. Back to putty, and I'll scroll down here, and we'll look at where that is. Here's where I threw that Latin in. The paragraph starts there, and the bold is inside. It's a child of the paragraph, right? So what happens is ch child elements inherit, inherit properties of parent elements. So if I wanted to change something to do with the B element, I could... There are ways for me to target that B element. I could say bold elements, B elements that are children of paragraphs. There was a way for me to say that. Um, I could just use a B and it would probably do it as well, but then it would do all Bs, right? Whether they're, whether they're children of parents or of paragraphs or not. So what we'll do in the next couple of videos is look at a couple of the, at the other two ways uh, to modify these elements. Um, first being, the first one after this one would be class. So we have tag level, class level, and ID level. Right, and they, they have varying degrees of, of uh, ability to target or, or the granularity in the targeting. Where tag level is the most, is the most broad, right? Just we, we put a rule for P, the P element, it gets all of them. But that may not be what we want, right? We may only want some of them. Some P's done one way, maybe some other paragraphs done another way. So there's got to be some way for us to, to have a little more granularity in what we're trying to do. So that's actually the more important thing to learn is how to handle the CSS, how to write it up properly. The individual um, property value pairs uh, I think W3 Schools is the way to go on that because you can never know uh, really what it is you're trying to change. That's more of a, a creative thing than necessarily a programming uh, part uh, of, of this whole endeavor. So I'm going to wrap this video up.
And then the next one we'll move on to, I guess, class level. And we'll see what we can do with that. Uh-oh. 